Hi everyone, welcome to theCUBE coverage of Ansible Fest 2021 virtual, hybrid, all online now. It's been a hell of a year. It's been going great with uh, all the interactions. Ansible Fest 2021, Carol Chen is here. She's the principal community architect for Ansible Community with Red Hat. Carol, thanks for coming on the Ansible Fest 2021 virtual coverage. Thanks for having me here, John. You know, one of the things about the pandemic I was mentioning, there's there's the online communities have been really, that have been online have thrived. Developers know how to do virtual and virtual first now is becoming a norm for developers. So the pandemic, although it's been in really big in inconvenience for many, developers actually haven't been truly impacted other than the face-to-face -face interactions around hallway conversations and events. You're seeing a lot more community uh, open conversations happening more than ever before. Just the trend itself was hot. Now you have more people collaborating. What's the state of the Ansible community right now? Because you know, online content is an all time high. I'm seeing videos hit. I'm seeing a lot of content flowing all around the internet. It seems to be more action. What's, what's the state of the Ansible community? Yeah, definitely. And um, actually from the very start, Ansible community is a very much online community because of the diverse nature in terms of you know, geographical um, distribution and um, just people from all of the world uh, coming together. So initially, I mean, of course, we do have like in-person meetups, which were a popular thing before the pandemic. Uh, that kind of took a, a, a little backseat and, and well, it turned virtual. Initially, people were like want, wondering what to do, but you know, we, we are used to uh, video conferences and, and online chats. So um, virtual meetups became um, quite a popular thing in the in the first first half of the pandemic. Um, so pretty much most of last year, uh, we actually saw a slight rise in the number of um, the median number of uh, attendees at these meetups because it's it's more accessible. You can attend from home. You can, you know, you don't have to go to a physical place to attend these meetups. Um, however, this year we, we are starting to see some uh, virtual fatigue and um, you know, the, the numbers are dropping a little bit, but um, you know, hopefully with, with the, um, some, some parts of the world are opening up and we are seeing some meetups coming into to person, in person again, uh, depending on the region, of course, because it's not um, the same around the world. But I think that the need for people to connect socially is always there, whether it's online or in person. And the Ansible community is um, pretty strong in that. And I, I want to stress that a lot of these meetups are organized by the community members, not necessarily by Red Hat or the uh, Ansible team. So, you know, the desire to connect with other people in the community has always been there and it's going on strong. Yeah, that's a good call out on the community side. I think that the affinity groups around the, the community self-forming these uh, meetups, right. people want to meet in person. That's going to come back. You're starting to see that hybrid, uh, but it's also, you're starting to see again, a fatigue for being like attending these virtual events, but at the same time, you're seeing the asynchronous consumption still go high too. You're seeing, okay, I, might, I can do a flyby the event or if it's in person, I'd prefer that, but there's still a lot more asynchronous going on and, and a lot more uh, opportunities to contribute. And you guys um, have done this contributor summits virtually. Can you talk about um, that trend? What, tell me about the, the virtual uh, contributor summits. Sure. So, um, of course, we have our regular com com community meetings, uh, weekly, in fact. But um, the Contributor Summit is a place where we can actually gather. Um, pre previously, it was face to face, at, uh, usually part of Ansible Fest, like the day before or after, depending. And uh, you know, to to really you know hash out uh, different um, discussions and more in depth uh, technical analysis of different parts of the project that we're working on. Um, even though um, in virtually we are still able to do that and we, ha we are actually able to increase the frequency of these events. Usually it used to be once or twice a year, depending on whether or not we have, when we have the Ansible Fest. But last year we had three contributor summits and this year the third one will happen along with Ansible Fest um, in September end of September, so uh, in this week. So yeah, um, you know, that's definitely the uh, advantage of making things easier to part yeah. for participants. Yeah, Carol, talk, but, about, um, talk about the vibe of the summit. I mean, these contributor summits, what's it like and what are people experiencing? Are they just um, contributing code? Are they working on projects? Is it hackathons? Is it more, what's the, right. what's the format of, what are people preferring? What is, what's the, what's the best practice? So, so what we, 
want to encourage is not just one person giving presentations and, and like a one way thing, but actually a dialogue. So a lot of these discussions are kind of uh, interactive. So uh, we use tools that uh, allow people not just like streaming one direction, but people can also appear on video and talk and express their opinions and join the discussions or, or in chat if they prefer not to show their face. But um, in any case, it's a lot of times it's not um, a full presentation, but perhaps an introduction for five, 10 minutes. And then we go to the discussion of a certain topic in depth. So it's a very, I, I would say, discussion based. And also uh, we are introducing a hackathon at this contributor summit because I think it's a quite a popular thing for people to get hands on experience or uh, work on something right away with people to support them uh, then and there. Um, so, so, you know, you can get results uh, in real time. So um, in actual fact, uh, even before the pandemic, our contributor summits have had like a virtual online component. So we were doing hybrid events before they were, you know, called popular hybrid before events. They were, but, they were necessary, yeah. they were cool. I mean, that's not really cool. <laughs> right, right, exactly. So because uh, our, like I said, uh, our contributors are from around the world. So we always make sure that they had a way of uh, participating in the contributor summits as well. Yeah, I think that's really important to point out. I mean. I won't say it's cool to do hybrids necessary now because of, of the pandemic, but that format actually is interesting because you've got a, a linear event that's physical face to face. Certainly that's super valuable when that comes back. But now that the online side has kind of been tied together with the simulated live asynchronous capability, you have this new format. Talk about how you guys are, are taking that to the next level around trust, because one of the things about being face to face and then being online and knowing people is working together and, and getting a feeling of trusting each other, right? So this is a right. huge part of community. How are you guys, um, now that we're more dispersed than ever, how are you guys um, handle, are, are facilitating and nurturing that trust equation? Right. So. Um, as, a, as an open source project, one of the key things is we, we do a lot of the things in the open. We you know that the pull request, the, the development of the code is all done in the open. That's you know a, a very kind of implicit trust that you can have through that. And also the community meetings are open, up to the public. Anybody can join if they're interested in. And uh, even if you're not, not able to join the meetings uh, because time zones or whatever, that we, we share the meeting minutes uh, after the meetings to everyone. Uh, which brings me to, um, we actually started a newsletter for the community called the Bullhorn uh, since last April, I think, um, because, you know, again, we are trying to explore more channels to be able to reach to different people who may not be able to attend in person or even during this, the same time as the community meetings. So they can have this uh, uh, bi-weekly newsletter every two weeks that you know, shares the meeting minutes, what has been discussed, the new developments in the community, the new collections, updates, new tools, and so on. So um, definitely we, we see like, uh, we want to improve the communication to, to the community and ways to they can provide feedback to us as well. And that's called the bullhorn? Let's just get in the word. Yeah, out. bullhorn, right. yes. Yeah. So it's like, it's like the update, it's like, it's like, it's like uh, you know, a quick, quick executive summary of kind of what's happening. Is that kind of the vibe? Right, right. Okay, well, I want to ask you specifically, I heard about this new um, community steering committee. Um, what's the purpose of this? What's this evolving into? Can you give us some uh, background on uh, the purpose and the objective of the community yeah, steering sure. committee? Yeah, sure. Yeah, we established the uh, ENSPO community steering committee uh, earlier this year. And um, as we were saying that the ENSPO project is growing. So of course the user community and also um, they're very well, happy to say that the contributor community is growing. Um, so, you know, we want to provide a better structure for the pro upstream uh, Ansible project. And um, a lot of changes are taking place. So we want to be, have some a group of people to be able to facilitate that. Um, for example, people are want to make a create new collections, uh, Ansible collections for automating technologies that they are, um, you know, uh, working on, or even contribute to existing collections that they have a vested interest in. So, so what are some of the procedures and, and policies um, that are needed, right? So uh, the steering committee defines these uh, pr procedures and makes sure that the new content coming in at, uh, are in compliant to, to the policies and so on. I mean, this kind of decision-making and, and stuff has been happening in the 
committee in, in I mean the community in an ad hoc, ad hoc manner to a large extent even before this, but having the uh, steering committee will provide a to add more structure, like I said, and also guidance and accountability for the Ansible community. That's awesome. You know, I love, first of all, I love your title, Principal Community Architect. And, you know, one of the things I've always been a big fan of with Ansible and now as part of Red Hat is one, Red Hat didn't screw up Ansible. They let it become what it was and became really big with the, with the, with the combination. But the community has always been content driven. And now you've got recipes, you've got collections, you've got content, but the community piece is key. And right now, more than ever with the pandemic, community is more important than ever before. Open source is more important than ever before. How do you look at the, the architecture of how to sustain and, and evolve communities to be more inclusive and to grow and to survive and thrive post pandemic? What's your, what's your, what's your learnings? What's your vision on, on architecting community for the future? I think the key thing is to really find channels and ways to listen to the community. We talk about how to reach uh, our news, uh, newsletter, whatever meetings to the community, but it's also the coming, what's coming from them. If we don't listen to what they have to say, we, we don't know what they want and uh, how, how we can make the community better, the, the process better for them. I mean, I, I've been uh, managing different open source communities before Ansible, but every community is different, right? I cannot say what worked for the previous community works for this. So I always try to reach out to the current uh, members in, in the Ansible community and hear what they have to say, the, their complaints, their criticisms, good, good and bad, because you know, without those feedback, we cannot grow and we cannot improve. So, and, and my, I myself, I've lived in three different continents. So I know the struggle of whether it's like language barriers or time zone restrictions. So, you know, we, we keep all these in mind as we, um, you know, build, build our relationships with the community. Yeah, and I think, this is I think there's a real opportunity with this new virtual standards that not yet emerge. I mean, you mentioned you've been doing hybrid, which has always been part of a physical event, which is going to become normal. But I think there's an opportunity that we're learning in this past uh, year and a half where there, new, there are new things and, and there's, it's good, bad and ugly. I mean, there's been some really ugly conferences, <laughs> virtual and painful, but there's also been some um, really nice moments where people are seeing uh, interactions. So uh, is there any learnings that you've uh, taken away from this past year and a half that you can point to that might want to share with folks watching around how to tap into the magical moments that could be enabled by you know, the virtual and or bringing people together? Mm -hmm. Um, you know, I, I myself, uh, have, I'm a lover of technology, anything new I like to try. So definitely in this pandemic, there's been a lot of opportunities to try different uh, technologies, what works, what doesn't work. I think, uh, you know, just trying things out helps. I, I know sometimes pe people are resistant to change. I, I myself sometimes find it hard to change my ways in, in certain, you know, uh, I'm used to this tool, I want to use it most of the time, but but anyway, you know, give, give give things a chance. But most, I think, most importantly, is focus on the people because technology aside, it is the people you are reaching out to, right? So, again, listen what they have to say. You know, if this doesn't work for them, find out what they prefer, or you know, what how we can make things better imp to improve things for them. So, uh, always keep the focus on the people, on the community, and you know. Um, give new technology a, a chance. Uh, you know, sometimes it works out, sometimes it doesn't, but you don't know till you try. Yeah. And yeah, just <laughs> jump in, the water's the warm. Best. Come on right. in, the water's fine. So the meetups are happening. <laughs> right. People are getting together where there where there's a geography opportunity where there's not a lot of mm -hmm. scaring, uh, too much scare going on with the meetups, so that's cool. What What is the um, current Ansible Fest 2021 key thing that you'd like people to walk away with, Carol? Because obviously the momentum's continuing, the world needs to go on. We are seeing hybrid, and then we're going to end up coming out of this soon. What's the what's the the key message this year from the Ansible Fest 2021 from the community? Um, that Ansible is open. As Ansible is you know uh, open to contributions from anyone, and uh, especially the Ansible community team is working very hard to make things um, uh, easy and and uh, accessible. So please feel free to visit ansible.com slash community for ways of reaching us. 
and you know use Ansible to automate your stuff and then use the free time that you have from that to spend more time with your family and friends. That's right, be open, listen. Now you got a steering committee to steer that ship uh, in the right direction, congratulations. Thanks for coming on theCUBE and yes. the update, really appreciate it. Again, uh, props to the community at uh, Ansible, part of Red Hat, you guys do a great job and, and again, um, we'll see you on the other side of the pandemic. And thanks for coming in remotely all the way in Finland. We're here for <laughs> Thank you so much for having me. It's been my pleasure. Thanks. Thank you, Carol. I'm John Furrier here for Ansible Fest 2021 coverage. This is theCUBE. Thanks for watching.